Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about 12th rib. Now, this is an example of atypical rib. It is also termed as vertebral rib or floating rib just because only one end of it, which is also termed as head, has got a single complete articular facet and it will articulate with corresponding articular facet on the side of body of T12. Now, this is T12 I have and on the side of the body you can see a complete articular facet or the coastal facet so over here the 12th rib is attached now the attachment occurs in such a way that the opposite pointed end will be directed downward forward and laterally okay so this is how in anatomical position it is oriented one more point to consider its anatomical position is it is having two surfaces outer and inner surface plus two borders upper and lower border so the inner surface which is concave which is smooth is slightly directed upward like this now let's see identification point as you know it's an example of atypical rib so most of the features of typical rib are absent let me show you a typical rib so over here this is a typical rib I have and let's just compare 12th rib with a typical rib so obviously the size is very small okay let's see the head see over here the head is having two demi facets for a typical rib over here for 12th rib there is a single facet in the head next to the head is a constricted neck which is again absent see over here now next to the neck is a tubercle which is again absent see this and in tubercle also there is an articular facet so obviously that is also absent now next to the tubercle there is a shaft and the shaft is having a coastal groove see over here now this coastal groove is also absent see this instead of it is having some muscular impressions see this now there is no angle there is no twisting just in case for typical rib you can clearly make out there is a twisting okay so the surfaces of the shaft will change their direction and over here there is formation of an angulation see this so this is the angle posterior angle which is again absent for 12th rib see this now let's see side determination points so this is medial end or broad end this is lateral end which is tapered pointed it has got two surfaces outer and inner the inner surface is smooth and concave the outer surface is rough and convex now it is having two borders upper and lower border the upper border is bit thicker as compared to the lower border which is thinner and sharper so this is a right 12th rib similarly let me show you left 12th rib see this so this is broad end medially this is the tapered pointed end which should be laterally this is rough convex posterior surface this is smooth concave anterior surface now this is a broader upper border this is thinner and sharper lower border see this so this is left 12th rib and this is right 12th rib so these are the points to determine side of given 12th rib now sometimes it may create a confusion between 11th and 12th rib let's see distinguishing feature between these two so here i have 11th rib and like 12th rib it is also having a single articular facet at the head the lateral end is pointed and it is attached with coastal cartilage but just compare the length of these two obviously the 12th rib is much shorter and additionally the 11th rib is having a slight angle so there is a slight twisting and there is posteriorly there is a faint coastal groove which is completely absent for the 12th rib so with these features you can clearly distinguish 11th and 12th rib now let's understand attachments on the 12th rib in a diagram so over here in this diagram this is showing right 12th rib and its anterior view or front view showing 
this anterior surface which is smooth and concave and over here along the medial half there is attachment of potatus lumborum with anterior and middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia now over here along the medial half there is pleural reflection and about to it there is presence of costodiaphragmatic recess now along the upper border there is attachment of external intercostal and internal intercostal muscle over here and out of it portion of internal intercostal muscle is also attached to the inner surface now lateral half in upper part provides attachment to diaphragm and in lower part it provides attachment to transversus abdominis so along the lower border there is attachment of middle layer of thoracolumbar fascia lateral to the gradatus lumborum over here lower border provides attachment to posterior layer of thoracolumbar fascia now next to the quadratus lumborum there is attachment of lateral arcuate ligament of diaphragm along the lower border similarly this is posterior view showing rough posterior surface and along the medial half there is attachment of levator costa longissimus thoracis and iliocostalis and along the lateral half there is attachment of serratus posterior inferior latissimus dorsi and external oblique abdominis muscle now just next to the head along the lower border it provides attachment to lumbocostal ligament from this lower border of 12th rib to the transverse process of first lumbar vertebrae so this is regarding 12th rib hope you have understood well thanks for watching